Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to look at the differences between the OBJ and RDB method. OBJ and RDB method is the most common interview question and it is very important topic in an activity rule configuration. Definitely, you should understand all these differences between the OBJ and RDB methods. In this video, I am not going to talk about different activity methods. But if you really want to understand different activity methods, I already have different lectures into the activity module in my Pega Masterclass course. I have provided the links, the discount links in the description of this video, which you can use and enroll with the course. So in this video, I am going to explain you five main differences between the OBJ and RDB methods. The first thing is OBJ methods, it can work with internal as well as external database. Whereas RDB methods, mostly they are used with external database. First, let's understand what is this internal database tables and external database tables. Internal database is like where you install the Pega. We know that we installed our Pega personal edition into our local Postgres server. And inside the Postgres server, we have the rule schema as well as data schema. And all the tables that are part of the rule schema and data schema can be considered as internal tables. So when you create a new table into the data schema, you can have a class mapping to the table and that can be considered as internal tables. Now, what is external table? In this course, during the database management, we also created an external database table and we did connect to the external database table using the class mapping wizard. So even for external tables, we can map a class to the table. So whenever if you are able to map a class to the table, then you can always use the OBJ methods. That is why OBJ methods can also be used with the external tables. So when do we use RDB methods? It's pretty simple. If there is no kind of class mapping, then you can always go with the RDB methods where it can directly write a query to connect to the external database server or schema. So use RDB methods when there is no class mapping. And if there is a class mapping, always prefer to use OBJ methods. So why OBJ method is preferred? The first main thing is it's really simple. There is no kind of SQL knowledge you need to write any OBJ method. In OBJ method, you are going to write some kind of OBJ browse where you can get some details from the table. You can write update query, you can delete, you can save, you can do whatever CRUD operations you want. You can do it using OBJ, but the query is generated at the back end. All you have to do is just configure the activity method and provide the right filter criteria or write key or browse conditions. And Pega will take care of generating the SQL query at the back end and then it will get the results or it does the update whatever it wants it can do but with the rdb method you need to create a new rule the connect sql rule and inside the connect sql rule you have to write the structural query language the sql query you have to write and pega will use that query and then it execute against the database so with obj method the query is automatically generated and it gets executed but with RDB method, you have to write your own query. That is why you need to have some, at least the basic SQL skills if you want to write some RDB queries. As I always say, Pega is kind of a low code platform. All you have to do is just do some configuration and Pega's engine code will take care of a lot of executions at the back end, just like for OBJ method, it executes the query, right? That you are not aware of and you don't want to worry about it, Pega will take care. The next main reason why OBJ method can be preferred over RDB method is with OBJ method, you can also access the blob data. As we all know, all this complex structure of data like the embedded data can be compressed and can be saved into a blob column into the database. And with OBJ method, you can easily browse all these blob data. Whereas in the RDB method, you have to write some query and it, and it is not that easy to query and get the results from the blob column. Of course, there are some PL Java functions which you can use to retrieve the blob data. I'll just go to the fifth point because that is also one of the importance of using OBJ method over the RDB methods. In OBJ method, whenever you use and let's say you do some OBJ save or OBJ delete, you can maintain the transaction. It means you can defer the save or you will not commit at the moment. Instead, wait for the entire transaction to get completed. And once if there is no error, then you can perform and commit. By this way, you can maintain the transaction and if there is some error, you can also easily roll back. But with the RDB method, it's not possible. It just does the auto commit. For example, if you write some query of updating, it just updates the entry. It does not wait for any kind of transaction. So when do we really need to use this RDB method? Now let's come to the fourth point. 
RDP method if you want to write some kind of complex queries which you cannot achieve using OBJ method and if you want to call or execute some store procedure then you can go for RDP methods and all other time just always use OBJ method and that is what PEGA recommends. In the coming 4-5 videos we are going to extensively look into the differences between different OBJ and RDP method and how we can use it in an activity rule. See you in the next video.